Attorney General Merrick Garland has appointed a special counsel to oversee the investigation related to the discovery of documents with classified markings at President Biden's Wilmington home and former private office here in Washington. Robert Hur is the special counsel now in charge. He's a former U.S. attorney from Maryland and was appointed to that post by former President Trump. Garland discussed his decision today. I strongly believe that the normal processes of this department can handle all investigations with integrity. But under the regulations, the extraordinary circumstances here require the appointment of a special counsel for this matter. This appointment underscores for the public the department's commitment to both independence and accountability in particularly sensitive matters and to making decisions indisputably guided only by the facts and the law. The phrases that pay their extraordinary circumstances, particularly sensitive. Keep those in mind as this story develops. This morning, the White House counsel said some documents marked classified were found in the garage and an adjacent room at Biden's home in Wilmington, Delaware. Nothing of a nature like that was found at his home in Rehoboth Beach. The president's lawyer said the Department of Justice was, quote, immediately notified, unquote, and arrangements were made to turn over the materials. Joining me now are two of my CBS News colleagues, correspondent Adriana Diaz, I'm, here, I'm happy to say, is here at the desk, and our senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe joins us from the North Lawn of the White House. Adriana, we learned some important time markings today that the White House could have disclosed but did not and had not. Major, when the attorney general was speaking, he really filled in the blanks pertaining to who knew what when. And what jumped out at me was on December 20th, it turns out that that is the day that the files were discovered in the garage of the Wilmington house. And the reason why that is important is because when we started calling and asking questions, we got a statement from the White House on Monday, which was January 9th, saying that, yes, indeed, documents had been found, but they only mentioned the documents found at the Penn Biden Center, mm -hmm. which we already knew about. And which were found before that December 20th date. Which was what kicked everything off, exactly. So for some reason, the White House omitted the fact that they already knew that there were additional documents at another location. So that is interesting. I don't know why that decision was made. I don't know why they didn't um, include all of the documents that they presumably knew about. Um, but that is something that certainly is new this afternoon after the attorney general made his announcement. And Adriana, in Washington, when you have a story to tell and you don't tell all of it, it raises more questions, which brings us to Ed O'Keefe. Ed, describe what the room was like today, White House briefing, the phrases used repetitively in your attempts, as well as others, to get deeper, more comprehensive answers. Well, like... Adriana, uh, we over here at the White House were stunned and stupefied when we learned from the attorney general that, in fact, that second batch of documents was found on December 20th, just a few weeks after the initial discovery and several weeks ago. And so it once again raised the question of why not inform the world that these documents had been discovered before or as you were informing the National Archives and the Justice Department. There is nothing that would stop the president of the United States from letting it be known publicly that this had been discovered and that it had happened. And then more curiously, why did it take until just last night for them to find yet another document at his home in Wilmington? And it's now inviting a host of questions that almost play out like a game of Clue. Where in the house were the documents located? Was it in the garage? What's that room adjacent? Is that the personal library that the president referred to in his statement earlier today? Or is it another room? And all of these questions that we're trying to ask in the public non-legal space are not being answered by the White House press office. They are claiming in their public statements that they are being transparent and that they are following the rules. And as Corrine said, Corrine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary, said several times today, do the, doing the right thing or did the right thing. And it's probably a line we're going to hear a lot more from them. But they're not being transparent in the non-legal public space, political space, by revealing what was said. These statements from the White House Counsel's Office that revealed some information, but not all information, are essentially the equivalent of a kid saying, I took out the trash, but not revealing that he didn't put it in the trash can, or that something else happened to the trash on the way to it being taken out. They told us one thing, they didn't tell us everything around it, and they didn't tell us, more critically, the timing. So they're going to continue to claim that they're being transparent, and that may be the case in the legal sense but not in the public political sense. 
after a president was elected vowing to be transparent and right after taking office vowed that he would be transparent, fess up to mistakes and lean on his staff at times to help explain and correct them. It happened again today. There was an exchange. Uh, we tried again, and I think we have part of it that we can play people. Was that because there were press reports earlier this week? Again, and there's... And the hope was that nobody would find out? Again. Or was it because... There is a process, an ongoing process that is occurring. We did this by the book. And what I mean by that is the moment that the lawyers discovered that the papers were there or the documents were there, they reached out to the archives, they reached out to the Department of Justice, and they immediately, rightfully so, reached out to them uh, to let them know what, what they had discovered. And I should, have, I should have clarified the question was, why were we only informed about this second discovery of documents today, and, and why did they suddenly go back to the home in Wilmington just this week to make one final review? Was it because of the press reports from Adriana's incredible scoop? And so, look... We'll see how this continues to play out, but clearly uh, there's a legal process and there's the public process that the White House so far is refusing to engage in. Major, among other things, and you know how frustrating this is having sat in the seats, <laughs> we couldn't get basic information today on who exactly is the president's personal attorney representing him in these matters. The attorney general referred to personal counsel that had reached out to the archives and had been engaged with the Justice Department in December when that second batch was done. Karine Jean-Pierre couldn't tell us. Couldn't tell us basic information on when exactly today and by whom the president was informed that a special counsel was being formed or being hired to investigate this. The president was sitting at a memorial service up the street at Na Washington National Cathedral for the late Defense Secretary Ash Carter when the attorney general made this comment. So if they say he wasn't told in advance by the Justice Department that this announcement was being made, who told him? When? Where? During the funeral? Afterward? Among the many questions we still have. And, Ed, uh, for those in our dedicated audience who might have watched the White House briefing today, when the press secretary says, I want to refer you to the White House Counsel's Office or the Department of Justice, it leaves in the air the idea that you're going to get a call back. Walk our audience through the actual practical truth of that reference. We don't necessarily get a call back. Uh, the White House Counsel's Office, at least in the last few days, in this White House, has issued statements uh, in response to press reports or issued statements in response to the Attorney General. And it's been, what, four days now, so we'll see how it goes from there. We have repeatedly, Adriana and the team of producers who are ably working with her on this every single day, been asking the White House uh, Counsel's Office and spokespeople for that Counsel's Office who were hired last year specifically to deal primarily with Republican congressional oversight that was anticipated from the House, but are now also dealing, of course, with this matter. They work separately from the White House press office that Karine Jean-Pierre runs as press secretary. And, and so we've asked the question, too. Well, why not have them come to the cameras and answer these questions in the daylight instead of sending emails that, or making uh, phone calls that don't necessarily get responses? Adriana, the attorney general said these are extraordinary circumstances of a particularly sensitive nature. When you appoint a special counsel within the Justice Department, you are saying essentially this is a big matter. Mm -hmm. It needs another set of eyes and all the resources required to f carry this investigation wherever it might lead. That wording stood out to me as well, Major. Extraordinary circumstances, because think of what we're considering here. Think of who and think of what. The who is the president of the United States and the what is classified documents, which should always be in a secure location. So by appointing a special counsel, this is noting the gravity of the situation, the potential uh, danger, risk, seriousness of the situation. And what he is essentially doing is allowing someone to have their own team, their own universe of resources to focus solely on this uh, with independence. Because let's remember, Merrick Garland was appointed mm -hmm. by Joe Biden. Yep. So Merrick Garland overseeing directly an investigation into Joe Biden is problematic. Um, Let but me ask you real quick, uh, what should we know or glean from the background of this particular special counsel appointed in this matter? Well, Robert Hur is a former U.S. attorney for Maryland. Mm -hmm. He was appointed by President Trump. So there we have, you know, that's, an, that's emphasizing the independence here. Um, but importantly, the NSA is located in Maryland. So he's overseen cases involving the NSA, overseen cases involving classified materials. So this is presumably a, an area of expertise for him. And the person who made the recommendation to the attorney general, John Lausch, also a Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Chicago. Correct. So it appears that for 
good or ill, but for at least a political conversation, the attorney general is leaning into people appointed to significantly important positions, past or present, by former President Trump. And I thought it was interesting that he actually said that attorney, that U.S. Attorney Lausch uh, would be leaving the Justice Department to go into the private sector. So I don't know if he was asked possibly to be the special counsel here, but it was interesting that, that the attorney general did note that. Adriana Diaz, thank you so much. And Ed O'Keefe at the White House, we thank you.